Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of the game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Company of Heroes from Bad Crow Games. And a quick thank you to Bad Crow for sending me a review copy of this one. If you've watched the channel before, you already know I'm a pretty big fan of solo and cooperative war games, but this one is kind of designed for a more streamlined audience, I think. How does it hold up? Let's find out and get to the list. So first for round number five, which is a mix, I'm looking at the way units are handled in the solo and cooperative play for Company of Heroes. So instead of using miniatures like the players use, instead they have these big circular tokens that start out face down with a color denoting whether it's probably a vehicle or probably an infantry unit. And when you get close enough to them, they get flipped and revealed. And on the positive side, this keeps kind of the overhead for the enemies pretty simple. You just move these big tokens around instead of having to deal with like big trays of units. And it's also nice for play variety and fog of war because you're not exactly sure if the unit coming towards you is anti-infantry or anti-tank and you have to kind of plan for lots of possibilities in your tactics. But on the negative side, even though there are four different player factions in the core game, there's only one AI solo faction, so you're always going to be playing against the same basic units. And finally, while it doesn't bother me personally, I think some players who came into the game looking for huge miniatures might be bummed out that they're just using cardboard tokens for their enemies. And for my number four, I'm keeping it out of mix, although this is probably the biggest thing I have complaints about in the game, and that's the structure of solo cooperative play. So in both competitive and solo co-op play, there are these victory point hexes, and if you can grab them, you get free victory points every turn. But in competitive, you also get victory points from destroying the enemies, and they get victory points from destroying you. Whereas in solo co-op, the enemy doesn't collect anything, they just kind of act as a timer, and you only care about those victory point hexes. That's the only thing that lets you win. So on the positive side, having a strict turn counter for the AI keeps games quick and light. And also something I'll discuss later, having the focus be on the victory point hexes lets the AI work in a really smooth way without too much rules overhead or any big flow charts. But on the negative side, and again this is my biggest complaint about solo co-op for the game overall, because the timer is so strict and because the enemies come out in pretty much the same order every game, you can sometimes get into a bit of sameness in terms of which victory point hexes you have to grab on which turns and which units you bring out first. Now this is mitigated somewhat by playing on different maps or trying out different factions and different units, but still there can be a bit of sameness in the AI structure overall. But let's get into the full on good stuff. My number three, a full pro, is the damage phase and how combat works out in this game. Combat in Company of Heroes is this really nice blend of strategy and determinism with a bit of randomness. And how it works is each unit has one or more attack dice to assign, generally to enemies within two hexes, and you just put it right on the hex with the enemy. And depending on the type, kind of this rock paper scissors matchup system, you might have to roll that die and give the enemy a chance to block it, or it might be automatic damage. So many times your attacks will automatically defeat someone, you don't even need to involve randomness at all, but you still get to mix that with the excitement of having some die rolls and sometimes not being sure whether you'll defeat an enemy or not, and deciding whether to overcommit on one enemy or spread things out and hope you get lucky. It just works really well and is super quick to resolve, especially with those dice. My number two is also a pro, looking at the factions and all the options for up Upgrading. So like I already said, there are four different factions and each one has a different mix of units. Now there is a good amount of crossover, but when they get unlocked and how they upgrade changes. And the upgrade system itself is great because pretty much every unit can be upgraded either with munitions to increase their attack or with experience you get from defeating enemies to give them lots of different cool powers. And everything is marked by these little dice that just go right on their base so it keeps things clean and organized in a nice way. And then on top of that, each game you pick a commander with unique abilities and you can unlock those to really change up which units you want to focus on. Gives the game great replay, nice variety. The one caveat goes back to my con about how the AI structure works. Because the game is so limited and quick, you sometimes can't really stretch your wings and try out every of the big tanks and late game units. And we are keeping it pro with my number one, the maneuver phase. Man, I love how this works. So lots of war games have tried out a you go, I go system where you either move all of your units or you move a few and then they move a few. And that's basically how it works here. Each player has three turns alternating where they can spend up to three action points and either divide that among their units or move one unit very far. And I already really enjoy that. It keeps things simple. You don't have to look up everyone's movement values. Terrain is super straightforward, but you have a lot of tactical choices. But then on top of that, I think how they've done the AI is great. You flip up cards with icons and each icon represents a given unit and tells you how it might want to move. And they use the resource and victory capture 
hit points to kind of intelligently shift their line of attack. It's a really streamlined system, but still has some intelligent things going on, still surprises you with who moves and when. I think it's just great. Now, you might want to avoid this one if my concerns about the AI structure and how they kind of push you too quickly forward sometimes worry you. And also, there are several cards with errata, and they're still fine-tuning and changing some of the core rules. So if that kind of thing might bug you, you might want to wait until the new Kickstarter if it's coming, where I assume they'll fix all those issues for the new printing. But if you want a streamlined, quick, tactically engaging, and varied war game, I think this one totally fits the bill. Tons of fun. Definitely recommend Company of Heroes. And if you want to see a full solo playthrough in action, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.